Oh, no. I hate it. I sure it doesn't make another hate YouTube video. I really made it to a YouTube video. It's not that you think that it's a dog's face on a horror. Becky's dog. No thank you, sir. No thank you. Who the hell is that? Oh, no. Who the hell is that? 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 Jennifer Diane Wright's The Many Worlds, The Many Worlds of Jennifer Diane Wright's. Um, I knew this person, sort of. Me and her used to post on the Gaming Steve forums in the lead up to the release of Spore. Remember Spore? Mm. You guys remember Spore? Mm. Yep. Yeah. I remember it's... when Spore was promising. <laughs> yeah, we were all looking forward to it. Um, but, uh, Jennifer, she's old. As fuck. She turned 60 this year. So Whoa. congratulations. Woo! Congratulations, Jennifer. Hey, man. You made it. You made it. Okay. So is it possible for a 60-year-old to be a lol cow? To be to be well. Have you seen the presidential <laughs> primary? <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 okay. <laughs> so this is all I'm gonna so what everyone knows. JDR4 mainly. Is my fly? No. Okay. Everyone knows JDR4 mainly is the Kokoro Wish. Mm. The Kokoro. Yeah, Munchie. Want to know my Kokoro Wish? That's yeah. a setup. It's a setup for you to say what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say what it is! <laughs> ah! Okay. Remember, I mentioned it in the Sonichu lecture. Uh, it's, um, it's the cartoon that, like, badly drawn, mouse drawn, MS Paint comic of this girl saying, Kokoro means heart. Heartfelt. Do you know what my Kokoro wish is? It is this. And then a long sequence of her um, husband, I guess her, it's, it's her husband, apologizing and lambasting himself for being such a fool and such a loser for failing to deliver on the promise of making a video game. <laughs> and then he says, here, I made a video game. Okay, so, yes, the Kokoro Wish comic, I'm sure I'll show it on screen, so you know what I'm talking about if you haven't seen it already. The man in the Kokoro Wish comic is her husband. She is married. She has been married since 19, or 1982. She's in a four-way polygamous marriage with Stephen Lepisto, her high school friend and programmer, Sandra Woodruff, uh, founder of HappyPuppy.com, and Eldenath de Villa, a, medi a medieval uh, expert and costume designer. Are you talking about her or this character? This is her. This is real life. She is the character. These are real people. This, this is an autobiography. This, this, this is no, no, no. The com. Well, never been more. This is an autobiocomic. Mm. But these comics that I'm going to talk about are works of fiction. Um, I'm mainly going to be focusing on her fictional stories. I'm starting to understand why this is a spiral, because I'm already <laughs> feeling like being lost in a maelstrom. I, ha I have a thesis. I have a thesis that all of the stuff, the fiction that I'm going to be discussing today, all has its origins in a, an event. The same event that oh triggered the Kokoro Wish Ooh. comic. Okay, and, I'm and I'll explain why. I'm in it now. Uh, that last name you read? Uh, Eldenath de Villa? Birth name or I don't fucking know. <laughs> I have no what clue. What country has names that sound like that? And that one sounds kind of made up to me. Middle um, Ages. He's from the Middle Ages, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I don't really know much about Sandra or Eldenath, um, but um, I know Stephen was a programmer, and Stephen is the guy in the multi in the um, the Kokoro Wish comic. Okay, so in. Now, I know some things about her from her autobiography comic, Impossible Things Before Breakfast. In 2005 and 2006, she wrote and uh, drew a bunch of autobiography comics about, like, weird, uh, uh, unexplainable, uh, um, what's the word for, like, um... Paranormal? P yeah, paranormal phenomena. Things that couldn't possibly be explained through science. Because she's a very skeptical, you know, person. She's very rational. But still, sometimes things just happen and there's no logical explanation. And it just makes you wonder. But it, one of them, she talks about her, the reason why she started making comics in the first place. And she says in that comic that in 2000, she had a mental breakdown because she had been trying and failing to make video games for 14 years. So back to... Mm -hmm. Uh, 1986, um, and then in the wake of this mental breakdown, she started creating comics. 
Um, Tom, did you have a question? I was going to say, so she's making comics like in her 40s. Like she started doing web comics in this like was, her mid 40s. She turned, she turned 40 in, two, in the year 2000, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, so the Kokoro Wish was not at 1986 specifically. That the, came later. The Kokoro, I don't know exactly when the Kokoro Wish comic was made. Mm. It was made after 1986, mm -hmm. probably shortly after. I don't know exactly when it was first made okay. or posted. Oh my god, uh, analog wild cows. <laughs> All right. In the year 1991, Jennifer and Steven, the guy from the comic, her husband, um, they made a game for the Amiga. It was called Boppin. And Boppin is a puzzle game. Um, and it has these like funny geometric triangle people, and they, they throw blocks, and it's about stacking blocks. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is adults only because it features like gruesome graphic violence. <laughs> like when you lose, these like funny triangle people commit like bloody seppuku oh, on themselves. Sick. This sounds amazing. Uh, I haven't actually seen it. I just know that it mm. sold 284 copies. Well, that's, that's not special. terrible. It's for, terrible. For the old days. <laughs> I don't think that's very good. Like, for a 90s game on the Amiga? Was it made by oh. just the two of them? or like? I think so. Okay. That's not so bad for an independent project. Yeah, but I mean, on the internet. Return on through, investment through was not great. Right. Yeah. I've never sold too much. Yeah. Was <laughs> it bopping? Um, I don't know. I don't have an Amiga, so I can't play was it. Was it pulling? Was it twisted? Twisted. Uh, Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we'll never know. We'll never know. Mm. Um, but okay, so I mentioned their other spouse, Sandra Woodruff. Together with her, they founded this website called happypuppy.com. And apparently, in 1996, HappyPuppy.com was the most visited games website on the internet. Wow. It was big. They sold the domain for like a hundred thousand dollars. Hey. Wow. Uh, yeah. But then, like, they lost all the money after the dot com bubble burst mm. or whatever. And I guess the site was it was they would mostly like host and link to like other games mm. on the internet, and it was just like a portal to find. Games you could play on the it's internet. It's like when every website was in the 90s, I feel like. Mm. Yeah, but HappyPuppy.com was the, was the biggest and best of them, I guess. And they sold it for a, for a pretty penny. Um, she also made, uh, again, in conjunction with her family and one other person who I don't have... It's not important. She and a bunch of other people made OtakuWorld.com, which similarly was just like a portal site. They would host... Um, you know, translations of anime. They would host um, mm. games from Japan that, that they had ported. Um, just wallpapers, you know, for mm. your desktop. Mm. Um, AMV skins, I, I assume. <laughs> um, stuff like that. And also, she ran a website called transsexual.org because she's a transsexual and she made a website talking about it. She's not a medical professional, so I don't think Maybe you should take anything on that site as like gospel, but that it's it's still up today. It's still there. Mm. It exists. Uh, for context, what did transsexual mean in 1998? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> she's a she's a male to female transgender. She has had surgery and all that. She's, oh, okay. So that and I don't know exactly when. I think she transitioned in her adulthood, but I'm not 100 mm. percent sure. But she's. Female for the whole period of time that we're going to be talking about mm. today. Okay. So on otakuworld.com, because she is mostly an artist, but she also could program some, I think. Steven was the programmer, she was more of the artist, but she made a program called Kamishibai, which I believe is a Japanese term for like paper doll theater. And the mm. program is basically a, just a little like application that opens on your computer, and you can make a sort of like choose your own adventure, like illustrated stories with it. And she made a couple of those. And one of the ones she, one, there was one she made about like a, an octopus samurai and it's just kind of a goofy little, little story. I forget what it's called. Um, but the other one she made was a short little choose your own adventure story called Pastel Defender Heliotrope. And it is the story about a super powered doll who is uh, basically her city is being attacked by this girl in a in like a helmet that shoots laser beams and you have to go you meet this this you have to go and attack her and stop her from destroying the city and you have to be like oh she's shooting a fireball dodge left oh i dodged the attack oh i dodged right oh no i got hit oh better try again hmm. um yeah and it's just a little story and 
it would later be expanded upon over here. The title is amazing. Pastel Defender Heliotrope? Yeah, yeah. It is. Really makes you wonder what the fuck's going on with it, doesn't it? Um, but at the time it was just a very small little, little battle story. And then, two years after that, she had what she describes as a mental breakdown, which she was like, oh, I've spent my whole life trying to make a video game. I've failed. Everything I've ever done is a failure. Uh, I can't bear it anymore. And then she discovered webcomics. And then she devoted the next ten years or so to making webcomics. She started out making them with only a mouse. She's very... She started with Unicorn Jelly, and Unicorn Jelly very proudly proclaims, this comic is drawn only with a mouse. Hmm. I just Did wanted you? to point out about the Kamishibai uh, thing, that Kamishibai is this like traditional Japanese theater style where they have like a box that they open up and they have like panels inside. So it's like very simplistic stories and I think maybe if she's making like simple games that's the idea she's thinking of it as like, yeah. oh this is a video game version of Kami Shibai. Yeah. Which is an interesting thing to even know in 1998. Like she's kind of a high tier she's an OG. Weeb. Yeah, she, I mean, like, she made OtakuWorld.com yeah. in 95. She was an OG so. weeb like before like Adult Swim or any mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. She was in Damn. on the Japanese shit. Um, she was, she was like calling things kawaii like way before it was cool. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. And way after it became on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, 2000, she starts work on Unicorn Jelly. And Unicorn Jelly is a science fiction fantasy story that takes place in a universe called <sighs> Trissel Mystan. Hmm. And Trissel Mystan one of the defining characteristics of all of her comics and all her stories is that they have a hyper, hyper, um, like, fleshed out and explained physics, right? Like, every universe has its own, like, completely separate cosmology. For example, in Trissel My Sand, there is not... The entire uh, universe is filled with air, so there's no, like, void space. But instead of planets, you have these triangular plates that are called world plates. And the world plates are just sort of floating in the void, arranged in like a three-dimensional Sierpinski triangle arrangement. And there's no gravity. Instead, there's a force called linovection, which is basically just a universal law, is that objects between a certain size range all just fall down, like, relative to the plates. But the plates themselves are too big. They're not affected by linovection. Mm. They stay um, stationary. Um, there is a force called electance that is generated by this thing called these things called veils that are just kind of arranged throughout space. The uh, the electance veils will occasional offshoot this um, I think this massless crystalline stuff called shatteral. And so every like couple times a year on massless? a massless massless. I think okay. they I think their energy. I think okay. Well, shatteral's weird. A couple times a year there will be this thing called a shatteral storm and this crystal stuff will start falling from the sky and it will just kind of build up and you don't get like hit by it. It doesn't like hit you and like cut you or, or crush you, but you can get like trapped in it and like suffocate. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so you have to like, in a, in a, in a shatteral storm, you have to run to like open space somewhere where you can like not get like buried under it. That's how you survive. Does it pass through you and just build, like, over you? I or? think so. That's fun. Cause, yeah, because their creatures do get, like, sort of just sort of trapped in it. Like, they're frozen in, like, a, in, like a, an ice cube. I, I just want to say, for my very limited exposure to the comics, they're, like, great and, like, cool <laughs> oh, and, like, looks sick. awesome. I mean, <laughs> okay. The art style is, like, straight. Like, it's primitive, they're but little, it's cute yeah, and it awesome. Yeah. They're a little based. Yeah, yeah, they seem based, just it's actually like based. The, 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 like, earlier. the character art and, like, the faces, you could make the argument that they're kind of bad. Sure. Like, they're kind of, mm -hmm. like, mushy, sort of, like, pseudo-anime. I think they're cute. Sometimes it's kind of cute. Some of, like, the, like, environmental drawings and, like, the drawings of, like, a big, like, there's one shot in particular that I think she's particularly proud of, like in, in, in the Impossible Things Before Breakfast comic where she describes starting to draw the comic and putting more and more of her energy into it. She shows herself drawing this one panel, and it's a panel of the world plate, spoilers, getting like cracked in half and smashed mm -hmm. by uh, like cosmic debris. And it looks fucking sick, uh, especially considering it was drawn only with a mouse. But then 
yeah, sometimes you'll have like a, a close up like picture of a face and it's just like really rough like mouse line and the eyes like are not quite and it, it's kind of like a mushy, mushy, like it looks like this and it's mm -hmm. like, eh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Unicorn jelly is a pretty attractive design though. This guy? Yeah. Simple and clean. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that just makes yes. me feel tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so Kawaii. unicorn jelly. A uh, great transition. So mm. in the universe of Trissel Mystan, there is what is called red life, which is like animals, humans, green life, plants, and white life, which is jellies and the jellies. And, and crystal, like crystal uh, uh, beings and jelly. Beings. So into this. And, uh, I, I, I unironically yeah, yeah. in love with this yeah, story yeah. already. Wait, let me. There's a. She uses a funny phrase to describe this one creature. Especially who, that unicorn jelly. Mm -hmm. Who he will yeah. go on to be called Uni, the unicorn jelly, mm. and he is described in his bio page as a wretched little slime monster. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was expecting the opposite direction. Of no, but he has big dreams, mm. and one day. Um, why isn't this a cultural institution? <laughs> one day, a unicorn, he's just like a, this slime is just like a puddle on the ground, mm. and one day a unicorn walks by and just pisses on him. Oh. And the unicorn pee turns him into a unicorn <laughs> oh. jelly. Yeah. Well, he sprouts <laughs> <laughs> He sprouts a horn. Well, hmm. it's later, later it seems it's like... It's cancerous, isn't it? Later it seems like the unicorn itself is actually a hallucination and like oh, he wow. was he was near like some there are these psychoactive plants that affect the jellies and it seems like he was affected by them and he merely hallucinated the unicorn and it's actually just his belief in unicorn magic that makes him like this. This is fucking okay. Deep. But he's got like his horn is like powerful as shit. He so can like cut through solid hope. metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if any you just got to believe, man. Just got to believe. He could piss on himself. Yeah, and, and, and grow a magic uh, horn. To no avail. <laughs> I mean, he already, yeah, he's been I trying it. proves yeah. that deep down Phantom doesn't believe he's a unicorn. Oh, not at least. He, he could try harder. He could do, he could do better. Mm -hmm. I um, don't think that. <laughs> but, but, um, where was I? He, oh yeah, there is the psychoactive flower that affects the jellies and seems like he just hallucinated. What could that be a metaphor for, I wonder? The, the Psychoactive unicorn. flower. Hmm. Uh, it, it, is important. It's important for... There's another character, KY, um, is also a jelly who has dreams about Uni and like sees Uni in her dreams. And KY was like mutated by this flower and uh, she is like a freak. She's like a teal... she's like a conical uh, thing and she wears a bow. Wait, so is it psychoactive or does it affect your physical body to touch this flower? I think it both. I okay. think it both. Nah. So they're like a jelly creature also, KY. Yes. So they're, they're literally KY jelly. Yes. As in sex. Yes. Is this intentional? Yes. Oh. I'm, it has to be. It must be. I it think must, so. It, it, it could only be intentional. Okay. Alright. So fucking cool. So, <laughs> alright. I love sex. <laughs> so, so Yuni gets adopted by Lupico, mm. who is a witch. She's like a shitty witch. A human. E well, yes, later on it's like actually she has some fey blood in her. Well, and like, what she, that, a person. Space, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Lupico is a witch. She's bad at magic. She never does any magic. It's like totally irrelevant to her character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she's like a nice lady who takes care of Yuni. And um, she gets contact. Someone in the village is like, "Hey, Lupico, help! My daughter's all fucked up. She got attacked by a crystal basilisk out in the desert. Mm. Um, and it'd come and help me with your magic." And she's like, "Well, I'll give it a shot." So she goes and she finds that this girl. She has all this like crystal shit like all through her body, and it's all like infecting her. And she doesn't know what to do. She's like, "I can't help." But Uni has unicorn magic, and like, I think he cries like a unicorn tear or bleeds a little unicorn blood. And it restores her, but she's not the same as she used to be. She's got all this crystal stuff up in her brain, and it makes her into this like super intelligent, mm -hmm. uh, like crystal quantum computing being. And that's Chow, um, which means butterfly. Uh, oh. I think. I think they say it does. Anyway, so Lupico adopts Chow as like a daughter, and together they. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like family drama about Lupico. She had like her mom. Like got killed because of a conflict between witches and alchemists. Like, <laughs> witches and alchemists are two factions, and basically in this world, witches are only allowed to do certain kinds of 
science, magic, they call it magic, and alchemists are only allowed to do other kinds, and you're not allowed to combine them. Mm -hmm. Like, alchemists are, you're not allowed, alchemists are not allowed to put one lens in front of another. Um, so they wear these, like, glasses that have, like, one big lens and one small lens over here. <laughs> because they're, and I think, and the reason why is because if you were to put two lenses in front of each other, you could create a telescope, and later they find a telescope, and they realize that the triangular world they live on is just one world plate in this, like, giant, like, mm -hmm. cosmos full of other world plates, and it is a big revelation for them. Yeah. What, what does the actual world look like? Does it just look like our world, like, from, you know, like, on the surface, looking at it as yeah. a person? If you're on the world, the surface of the world... my imagination plate. was just, like, floating d literal disks in space with slimes on them up until a certain point. The like, world plate is, the world plate is big. You can't, like, see the, e the edge right. of it from anywhere unless you, like, travel pretty far to it. Though, and on the world plate, there's, like, there's like a big lake in the middle, and then there's like forests and deserts and stuff just kind of covering it. Like, mostly it looks like our world, except that it's got these jellies beings. And the, the jellies live in these big, like, goopy, like, slime cities and stuff. Hmm. Cool. It's, it's pretty cool. The jellies are pretty sick. Um, right, so witches versus... there's like this... There's this conflict between the witches and the alchemists, and like, later on, like, the alchemists sort of try and pull a coup, they want to steal... I think there's like... they want to steal the... There's like, there's like these ancient laws, like, oh, we're not allowed to do these... Witches are allowed... Alchemists are not allowed to fly. Witches can fly. Alchemists, that's forbidden for alchemists. Um, what what advantages do the alchemists have? Because it seems like they just can't do all this They have all the, like, other science. Like, they yeah. can build, they build, like, tanks and walkers okay. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, alchemists do more of what you would consider, like, traditional... Science. Right brain, left brain sort of stuff. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, maybe. Are these like gendered groups? Because witches are usually women, no, right? Okay. No, it's 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 not like that. Like, okay. a, a, yeah, it's just like two factions of society. Mm -hmm. But like, Lupico's mom got involved with some shit with um, the leader of like the Alchemist Union, and her sister was like this high-ranking prostitute who tried mm. to. Who like inherited her house, and then she sent Lupico out to the desert. But then later on, Lupico has to like she gets the house back. But then also the aunt, the prostitute aunt, also found Ky the mutant and like raised her she did. and called her like a good little girl. And Ky liked that, so Ky decided she was a girl now, even though slimes don't have gender. So now Ky wears a bow. Dude, sick. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, you said yeah. Jennifer, like the actual person, yeah. is. Uh, Skeptical by nature. She describes herself as like very <laughs> rational. She's basically a scientist. S scientifically would you, minded. Would you say that the the world plates are a tacit endorsement of flat Earth, or is that just a coincidence? <laughs> well, there's there's other universes that have other like arrangements. Mm -hmm. No, she describes she describes our own universe. She calls our our universe Mundus Mundus. And you know, she why just says, does she do that? <laughs> there's a, there's a. To what uh, end? <laughs> to what end? She has a whole like taxonomical like categorization system of a universe where it's like uh -huh. you apply like a series of descriptors, and I don't remember them all because it's really complicated. Okay, okay. But Mundus is the word that means Earth-like, and since our world is like the default, it's the Earth universe. One. Ours is like, especially because of the name. Yeah, yeah. It's like Earth. It's it's Mundus. Mundus, and then a bunch of other, like, subcategories. Okay. Um, so, there's, anyway, all this stuff with Lupico, like, learns her family secrets and family drama and gets involved in politics and stuff, and then, and there's other characters you meet along the way. There's YY is, like, a, an eng like a little ogre man, engineer, dude. Texto and Zizix are, I mentioned these guys because they'll come back later. Mm. Texto and Zizix are a pair of just, like, psycho uh, murderers who just go around killing people for fun or like <laughs> tricking people into killing people for fun like mm. they like I, they're, my favorite is Texto and Zizix they like they get like a little girl right and like they lure her into an alley and they, they like they do something to her and then like they call for help they, they call a guy over and they're like this girl needs your help and he's like oh god what 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 can I do? And he's like, here, you're gonna have to operate. Take this and stick it into her neck. Oh no! And he's like, I'm gonna go get help. Just <laughs> keep just keep driving that blade into her neck. Like remember, you're saving her. And they just leave him to do. It. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Texto and Zizix are just like sick fucks. Yeah. Million and Yasui are a pair of gay like mercenary warriors, and they but they know Texto and Zizix. And they know these guys are evil, and they've been looking for them, and they want mm -hmm. to put an end to their reign of terror. Philia is like 
basically the president of the world plate that they live on, and Foe is like a high-ranking general. So anyway, things happen. Plot, uh, yeah. I'm just curious, is, is it fair to say that Lupico is the main character, or is it Uni? Uh, I would say Lupico is the main character. Okay. Yeah, of, of Unicorn... Step on the market. <laughs> yeah, Lupico is basically the main character, mm -hmm. um, and I think Lupico is to some extent like a self-insert of mm -hmm. Jenny. Uh, they look they look the same. Um, so they find. I'm not going to get into all the details. The point is, they find a telescope, which is banned technology because you're not allowed to put um, lenses in front of each other. And they look through it and they realize, oh my god, there's um, there's other world plates out here. Oh wait, sorry, I skipped something. Shadow storms start happening irregularly. They're supposed to happen at very regular intervals. And they're like, that's, that's weird. That's not supposed to happen. In fact, a shadow storm hits at the wrong time, and the jellies are not prepared for it, and the entire jelly species is wiped out. Yeah. All the same, except for Uni and um, KY. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that survive, uh, tragically. So, um, and then one day, something that's never happened before occurs. Wind. Like, the air does not move in this universe, but one day, wind starts blowing, and everyone's like, what, what do we do? Like, what does this mean? What's happening? Um, Philia, her, like, Excellent. husband, I think, gets killed by, like, a brick that gets blown and, like, crushes his head. Mm. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. What is the tone like of this story? Like, It is, like, mostly... Mm, it starts out pretty... I would say it starts out pretty, not like happy-go-lucky, but just pretty kind of like... Slice of life. Mostly, like, fantasy slice of life. You know, with the, like some focus on like some of the science fiction stuff, like the shadow yeah. storms, and things like that. And like, and then it gets more, it gets more like hard sci-fi, and it gets more like, it gets more serious and tragic as it goes on. How is this story presented? Like comic strips or like pages? Mostly or? in like three panel strips. Like typical mid 2000s webcomic oh, okay. format? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, now I think I get it. Sometimes there's like a big like full page spread, but... I've, I've just been suddenly sucked back to 2003 just trying to picture that. And it's all, it's all in black and white. And remember, it's all drawn with a mouse. Hmm. So, these weird phenomena starts happening, they investigate with the help of YY and Million and Yasui, and they discover this telescope and they realize, okay, there are other worlds out there. Oh shit, there's like something that's like destroying worlds and it's coming for us. There is actually a big like sort of wall of like falling debris that is just kind of mo sweeping through Trissel Mystan, just breaking like world plate after world plate after world plate. And they're like, well, darn. We got to do something about that. So they build these. They they hurry to build these arc ships, which are going to trans uh, uh, transport as many people as they can to a new world plate to avoid the stormfall, which is what they they call this mm. um, phenomenon. But you know, there's a big, there's a big like they have to like it, what the stormfall is is the debris of other world plates that have been crushed. And so basically, as it sweeps through the universe, it gets bigger and bigger because the debris from each one just adds to the storm. Yeah. What started that chain reaction? Um, oh god. If anything. Actually, I don't know if I can give you like an exact answer, but I know that it, there's... That I'll, we'll get... we'll talk about that. Okay. That's okay. involved in later stuff. Hmm. The origin of the Stormfall. So, the Stormfall is, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger, so they make these arc ships. Um, in the Stormfall, like, a, like, spaceship from another, uh, presumably more advanced world plate lands, and so our main characters have to, like, jump on it and, like, fly it to where the arc ships are, mm -hmm. and they jump on the arc ships. And by the way, remember, Chow is, like, a super intelligent, um, mm -hmm. crystal brain being. She has all this like important data on her in her mind that she remembers that was destroyed from like the world's archives. So she uses that as like bargaining power to get herself onto the onto the ship with Thilia, and they have to leave the world plate behind. Everyone's dead. The entire civilization is destroyed. There's like maybe a hundred people escape on two arc ships, and they go through space and they have to pass through an electance veil, and it's very painful and damaging and like melts a bunch of their skins off, and, uh... <laughs> Alright. Well, no, their ship is fine. The other ship, the ship commanded by Commander Foe, a bunch of his soldiers get all messed up by it. But they land on this new world plate, 
and on this new world plate is only jellies. There are no humans, so they are basically like, they're alien invaders. Mm. And there's this like sort of um, 1950s like, oh, they came from another world plate, like noir <laughs> series of panels <laughs> where like from a jelly's perspective, he sees these like humans coming over and he's, and he, you know, <laughs> jelly society just goes nuts and, and is torn apart in terror. Um, and rightly so, because immediately Commander Foe is like, all right, well, there's only so many resources, it's time to genocide the jellies. <laughs> and they do that for a while. Hmm. And, um... Oh. I don't know how much to get into individual characters. There's, like, Texto ends up getting on the, on the, the, the Ark ship. Yasui, or, Million and Yasui are an item. Yasui ends up falling off the ship, but, like, before he falls, like, he gets Texto to promise to be good. Like, as okay. in, like a weird power play. And so from then on, like, Texo, he's still evil, but he has to, like, act good. And Million, who remember Texo was, like, his mortal enemy. Yeah. But now Texo is good because he promised Yasui. So Texo is, like, Million's last connection to Yasui now that Yasui's dead. So Million sort of, like, I don't know if he falls in love with Texo, but he sort of, like, really starts caring for him, even though he hates him because he's his mortal enemy. Um, it's pretty based. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> anyway. They set about building a new society on this new world plate. And um, they, start, they start out doing it by committing genocide against the Jellies. But Cho, who remember is part, she has crystals in her brain, which makes her super intelligent, but also the crystal and the Jellies are this white life. They're like related to each other. So she's like, I don't want to do this. I'm going to go and try and find a different solution. So in like the dead of night, she like goes off to sea. Do, do Uni and KY, who are jellies, have anything to say about this jelly um, kind of One presumes they don't like it. Presumes, indeed. <laughs> well, actually, 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 there's a moment where Chow is asleep, and like the crystals from her head like contact with KY's jelly flesh, mm. and she has a vision of Lupico dying as an old woman, and there's and she sees a bunch of other things including she sees herself uh killing and dissecting ky and ky sees this too so when the vision ends ky is like whoa shit get get the fuck away from me mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like what's what's up with that um but it turns out that just happens she does that she kills ky dissects her chops her up to discover her jelly secrets hmm. uh, and then she in the dead of night she goes off to sea and then, um, it's a Commander Foe discovers that a bunch of these people are planning on, you know, basically revolting. Like, they're waiting for Chow to come back and then overthrowing Foe so they don't have to commit genocide against the Jalees anymore. And he's gonna start executing them because that's treason. But then Chow comes back and she's got these giant, like, slime walkers. And she's converted, like, the entire race of Jellies into basically KYs. They're all, like, weird conical freaks, and they, like, love humanity, and they're, like, they're loyal servants and stuff, and they, like, they make food for them, and they build cities for them, and it's just beautiful, it's perfect, perfect society. But you said that Chow had dissected KY. Yes. But now she's, like, an ally of the Jellies? Well, KY is dead, but she... Yeah, because she killed she, her. She took whatever she learned from KY and did something to the other Jellies to turn them into... Whatever KY she was. She straight sacrificed her for science with no hesitation. Yeah. For okay. the greater good. For the greater good of humanity. Gra okay. To create, a, to create a loyal race of slave dog jellies mm -hmm. that would serve us unquestionably. Th th this is exactly what the fucking scientists and all the warriors from Animorphs were missing. They were like, oh, I'm too hesitant to, like, you know, kill this couple people to save the universe. <laughs> but meanwhile, fucking Shazam, they were just like, oh, like, my friend, like, Emil is like, I'll just, I'll fucking bisect you so yeah. I can narrow some more secrets. Let's see what your guts are. Let's see what your guts are. Let's see what well, yeah. we both knew what needed to be done. But, but what of Uni? What of Uni through all this? Well, that's a great question, because on the night that Chow leaves to go find the jellies mm -hmm. and do whatever she does to, like, make peace with them, Uni just disappears. Okay. And is never seen again. Never? What? Yeah. No. Never seen again. Nobody knows what happened to him. Okay. Uh, just later on... Is Lu it mentioned in the story? Yeah, yeah Lu Lupico is just like... Like... So... There's like a rebellion at first because people are like, hey, Chow's taken over everything. We don't like that. She mm. can't be, uh, they call her the, the Rectrix. She can't be mm. Rectrix for life. We didn't elect her. This is bullshit. So she just abdicates power. 
But then, like, a generation later, she comes back and is like, no, okay, but, no, I'm gonna be Rectrix, though. And she rules for 400 years, oh. and, uh, everyone grows old and dies. Um, and it's pretty based. And then, um, we see, yeah, Lupico is an old woman. Lupico has a daughter, and she, every day she takes this big bucket of tea out to the wilderness and puts it down, uh, hoping that Uni will come back. And, like... He never does. Oh. Uni just disappeared one day, and nobody ever knew why mm. or what happened to him. So and the title character just fucks off from the entire story. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's... I think she just wasn't interested in him anymore. She says that, like, you know, Mama always used to tell me that magic is like a friend. You know, if you ignore it, you'll lose it. And when real magic comes along, you gotta nurture it. You gotta treasure it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. I didn't treasure Uni enough, and that's why he's gone. Wait. She said but that? she could yeah. bring him back yeah. if she wanted to at any time. I get it. Ben, I thought this would be stupid, like everything you like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, like not this me. time. Wait, was that an in-universe quote, or is yeah, that a in-universe? Oh, what, that's oh. what she's. she's oh. I mean, she's just speculating on like why did Uni leave? Oh, okay. maybe this is why. I don't know. Okay. Um. Okay. Anyway, let's flash forward to like centuries in the. Oh, the last time we see Chow. Chow is like an old ass woman, hundreds of years old, like 400 years old. And like some historians, they've just developed, they've developed photography, right? Mm -hmm. This is the new technology and they're like, oh, we're gonna go take a picture of the Rectrix. This might be the only like photograph of the Rectrix that ever exists in history. So we gotta go do it. And they go to see her and she's like, I don't care if you take my picture. No, 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 I gotta tell you some important stuff. So they go to the, like, the underside of the world plate and she shows them some artifacts that are like, these are not from us. These are not from the jellies. These are from like a completely separate being from not just another world plate, but from a whole other universe entirely. Mm. Um, I think, I think it's the crawl me, but I could be wrong, but it doesn't matter. These are creatures from another universe. These are their artifacts. And she's like, hey, let me tell you how humans came to Trissel My Stand. There was a thing called the multiversal rain, which was basically these bubbles that passed between universe and they passed through a world our world, Mundus Mundus, mm. and they basically copy-pasted like spherical sections of Earth, and then they moved through the interdimensional space, and they just passed through um, Trisselmeistan and just deposited these big like chunks of Earth mm. in Trisselmeistan, and that is how humans came to live here. This was like supposed to just be a slime world, mm. but humans got like copy-pasted here through this multiversal rain phenomenon. And, um, and that's like the last thing Chow ever says, and then her fucking crystal basilisk blood like explodes out of her, yeah. and she turns into a fucking crystal basilisk and then detonates herself, <laughs> <laughs> and okay. that's it! And then in the far future, humanity is like spacefaring, and they got this like supercomputer, it's called, it's the, 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 the Chow stands for Computational Heuristic Organo Crystalline Unit, and it like runs all their shit, and mm -hmm. it runs their spaceships, and uh, it's crystal computer technology, and that's the future. Munchie. I feel like the same way I get when I watch Ancient Aliens, like, scared, because I know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you, can't, you can't prove it's not. <laughs> I dare you. I dare you to try. So that's, so that's Unicorn Jelly. That took three years. That ending was fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a little base. Mm -hmm. How long have I gone, by the way? Anyone know? Uh, I'm like... 40 minutes away. Okay. You adjust your micro quick before you get to the next section. So any any questions about... Oh, yeah? I'm gonna move it, because you keep hit, like brushing oh. it, I think. Sorry. Yeah. Very cringe. This just is great. Like, this entire thing. She's not a lol cow. She's yeah, just... I'm not seeing the lol cow angle here at all. <laughs> well, I'm sure that the, the writing is quite awkward in this, right? Sometimes it's pretty awkward. Yeah. There's a lot of... I'm really just giving you, like, the highlight. This, this, plot this comes across to me like... like like, very high-level autism, but also very high-level intelligence at the same time. Like, she clearly it's knows cohesive. lots of things. Yeah, like, there's definitely, like, a lot of thought put into all of The sci-fi concepts are fucking pretty the high-level. Like, there's, there's, there's way more to, the like, the physics of Trissel My Stand than I went into here. There's, like, there's, like, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, you'll be reading the comic and, it, like, all the time there'll be like a, hey, here's an alternate comic for the day, and you'll find just, like, a huge, like, di <laughs> diagram. 
showing like, here's what all the vegetation in Trisomycin looks like. Here's how oh, like, fuck. here's how, like the mechanism by which gravity works. Here's like the uh, the, 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 the periodic table of elements in Trisomycin, and it's based on like a triangular grid formation and da 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 da. And uh, there's like there's like audio dramas that she made, like like mm. in character audio dramas. What do those sound like? Uh, awkward. Mm. <laughs> because I think it's just like her and the scope of this is incredible. Her and her yeah. her spouses just like kind of goofily like <laughs> reading. Oh, there's a new love have they, they do it really goofy? Have they been in like a four way like the whole time like since the eighties? Like they always um the the four way marriage materialized between 1982 and 1984. So I assume is it still going strong? Do we know? Presumably. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know for sure, but I didn't see any signs that it had like stopped. Is but she doesn't really post that. Human evolution. What we're looking at right now. This person <laughs> is like incredible. Okay. So any questions about unicorn jelly before I move on to where can I find it? Oh, I think it's unicornjelly.com. Is it like that's, is that an official site? Is it still up? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I. This I think still they, paying for hosting. Got well, they, well, her right. her website. I mean, you can find her all her stuff through Otaku World, which is still up. Holy um, the G Jennyverse I think is like the portal to all her stuff, and it leads to Unicorn Jelly. I think is its own website. PastelDefender.com. To save her, I think is on the Unicorn Jelly website because it's like a side story to that. This is really cool. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so obviously, you know, we have meta knowledge of knowing that this person is a little bit kooky and a little bit strange, a little bit wacky. Mm -hmm. Do would you recommend unicorn jelly? Like, is it good or is it bad? Or are you lured yeah. in by how weird it is, or um, is it actually good? It's kind of good. I mean, it is kind of awkward. And is it short? Is it long? It's not that long. It's like it's maybe like two hundred strips. Is it good things. or is it evil? Binary. It's very yes, evil. No. Okay. It's super <laughs> evil. It's. I would say it's good. I'd say it's worth reading. The art is sometimes good. Sometimes it's really like hilariously bad, uh, and it's not that long. So. You say Jennifer's more of an environment artist than a character artist. Oh yeah, her character mm -hmm. art is like pretty bad. Okay. Um, like it's actually really bad sometimes. It seems like she's more of an environment creator in general than like a character. She's an idea guy to the core. Yeah, I mean she has characters, but they're all they're all pretty like they're all pretty basic. All right, so that was 2000 to 2003. In 2004, she started, or I guess restarted, Pastel Defender Heliotrope as a webcomic, and this one takes place. Now we know that it takes place in another universe called Pastel. In Pastel, there is not the like energy force called Electance that Trisselmeistan had. There is a like seven part force called Chatoyance that is like it comes in like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, heliotrope. And they each each do like a different thing. Like red is like heat, orange is like rotational energy, yellow is light, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not that crucial to know all of them. But so there's this famous scientist, Dr. Nakimono, and he is like the biggest celebrity in this world. Everybody loves him. He's a cool guy. He goes on talk shows and everything. And his like second lieutenant, his like right hand man, is this guy, Dr. I think you say it, Aoi? That's Aoi. Dr. Aoi? That's blue. blue. Okay. Mm. It's funny because he's purple. He's not blue. That's a strange thing. <laughs> All right. But he's, <laughs> he's, he's Dr. Aoi. <laughs> and Dr. Aoi is like this self hating, self-flagellating, like, weak pervert. The Benson. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you see Dr. Owie do in past is he goes to, like, a sex shop and buys, like, a fuck doll. And he drags it home, and he, like, cries <laughs> over it. He's like, I can't believe I'm such a loser. I do this. I'm disgusting. Uh, <laughs> and, um, so I have a feeling that this might be what her husband might be like. <sighs> Um, Maybe it's what she feels like she's hmm. like. I don't huh. know. It could be. Huh. Huh. Um, no, so, she's clearly do the, the Chad doctor. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have these issues. So, so Dr. Aoi works with Dr. Nakimono, and they are using Chatoyance, or what's, there's a phrase for like solidified Chatoyance. Um, mm. Specific. Uh, ugh, God. Who cares? Um, yeah. They use solidified heliotrope Chatoyance to. Fuck around, in so many words, with a thing called an ancestral case. 
and an ancestral case is a it's literally like a piece of luggage that was from the old like another universe and they don't know where it came from they just know that it pre-existed the world of pastel and therefore like the space inside of it is like attuned differently is like mm. so what they can do is they can use heliotrope shadow ants to prod it and it can cause like disturbances in the fabric of reality and it can open up like holes basically into other worlds and what Dr. Aoi and Dr. Nakimono are doing is they are trying to find other worlds for the people of Pastel to inhabit and they're doing this with the blessing of the church the church of Godan is like a really powerful force in this world but the thing is they keep finding these worlds that they that are like random right they seem like like they're full of acid or like they're like just a black void or like they're they're worlds that like suck the life out of everything and it's like these are not fit for habitation and they're like we can't tell the church about this if the church like the church's teaching is that the world is made for humans to use if they knew that like basically every universe is like a hellscape that is totally unfit for human habitation it would be like blasphemous they wouldn't accept it they would like bury our institution they wouldn't fund us anymore they would they would erase our research so we need to find a good universe to be like, look, we found one. It's a blessing of Godan. Mm. That's the only way that we're going to get to continue being famous scientists. Is there a need for digital words? Are they like overpopulated or running out of resources? Or? No, I think they just want to do it. Okay. Just for science. Mm -hmm. You know, the thrill of, thrill of discovery. Mm -hmm. um, so. So they already know God isn't real. We know that, but we're gonna Naki, pretend. Nakimono is pretty religious. Mm -hmm. Aoi is like not. I think Aoi doesn't really care. Not Even in the face of discovering all these inhabitable worlds that violate the teachings. Yeah, of... Nakimono's like, hey, I'm a religious man. Mm -hmm. I understand that there are some weird implications to all this research we're doing, mm -hmm. but I still want to do right by the church and like, I'm still a man of Godan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So. He's a Godan man. Man. So oh, anyway, man. <laughs> they're fucking around. They're fucking around, and they're going to universe after universe, and then they have a little accident. They have a little accident in this universe called Tlikitcoctel. Oh, I love that sound. Tlikitcoctel. And uh, I think is how you say it. That feels good to hear. Yeah. yeah. yeah all right. So this this world is like a real bad one. This is a world that like exists by like sucking up entropic energy from other worlds. Basically, it feeds on other worlds mm. to exist Sick. itself. And it's while they're there, the oh they're, they're, they, they go in these big like spacesuit mech things, basically. And while they're there, um, there's an accident. Doctor Nakimono gets lost. He gets like abandoned there. Mm. They have to leave him behind. But uh, Doctor Aoi just recovers this like orb, this glowing orb that he calls the Omnipotor, and he takes it home. And he's like, hey, my boss, the most famous man in the world, I just abandoned him in some hell world. Uh, <laughs> and I'm fucked. Uh, time to get drunk. Time to fuck my fuck doll and feel bad about yeah, myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what he does. So, so he gets drunk, and presumably he fucks his fuck doll. But for some reason, I guess he decides he like puts the Omnipotor in the doll. Oh, no. And it comes to life. Oh, no. As Pastel Defender Heliotrope. Oh, oh my god. Wow. It, it, it's a it person. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my so he's god. like... So he's like... Wow. So he wakes up and the doll is talking to him and he's like, you gotta fucking stop that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be, you can't be happy. Give me, give me it. And he takes the omnipotent. Is he right? simply frustrated that he can't fuck her if she's like, has a, you know, putting a resistance or personality? No, he's like... He's like, I spent like a hundred dollars to fuck you. I did not... No, okay. he's like, one, this is an abomination. Okay. Two, you're not real anyway. Okay. Because you're not a real person, mm -hmm. obviously. Three, this is really embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine a worse event <laughs> than a sex doll coming to life and being disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> no, the sex doll loves him. The sex doll oh comes to life oh. and is like... Because she doesn't know she's a sex doll. Uh -huh. She thinks she's like a baby oh, or a she, kid. She, 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 she calls him Papa, and he's like, I no. Oh, that's even worse. Not, worse. Not, worse. No, worse. no, 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 this no, 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 
Let's talk about some of these other characters. We got mm -hmm. Chartreuse is a student. She's like a science student at whatever university that Aoi and Nakimono are. <coughs> but she's like perpetually unlucky. Mm -hmm. She's like poor. She's in this like abusive relationship with this guy who like beats her, but he like pays for her to go to school so like she can't leave. But then there's like a domestic dispute and she he kicks her out mm. and uh, you know the police don't believe her and she loses oh, her job. God. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, mm. she yeah, well she was cohabitating before marriage, so she's a loose woman and not to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. The uh, Where am I? So, so, so she she loses her job. Uh, she tries to commit suicide. She mm -hmm. she walks to the. By the way, pastel is kind of like Tristle My Stand in that it's made of world plates, but they're much closer together. Mm -hmm. You can see other world plates from your world plates. These ones are rectangular, not triangular. But you know, same same basic idea. So she walks to the edge of the world plate and she jumps off. And. I forget how, but somehow, I think maybe because they go to the school and maybe she was carrying a transmitter on her or something, Dr. Owie learns, like, oh my god, someone just jumped off the edge of the fucking world. They committed suicide. Ah, I know there's, like, a superpower doll that, like, might be able to go do something about it, but, like, it would be really embarrassing mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. anyone saw that, but I guess I gotta do it, so. He puts the omnibiter back in, and he's like, go, save, save Chartreuse. And don't tell anyone that you're a, a, that you exist. And she's like, yes, yes, Papa, immediately. Mm. And uh, she does that, saves Chartreuse, and he's like, okay, cool. Now you go back to being a doll, please. Thank you. <laughs> and Chartreuse is like, her life still sucks, right? She's like, <laughs> she's like, she goes to get, she she gets fired from her job again. She's like homeless. She's like, everything's all fucked up. She says she takes like the last of her money and she goes and she buys a fucking destructor helmet and she goes on a terrorist rampage. Oh. And that's the events of this this game. The, the oh. one you fight in this game is Chartreuse with the destructor helmet. Whoa. <clears throat> uh, hello. Uh, ben Saint here. Sorry to interrupt the lecture, but since I don't know when there would ever be another opportunity to show this on YouTube. Let me present, for the first time ever, um, the original 1998 Pastel Defender Heliotrope Kamishibai story. Enjoy.
にちは。
Well, there you have it. Uh, this was um, six years before the actual comic started. Uh, an interesting thing I think about it is that it references the cosmology of the world and previous interactions between the characters in a way that suggests that Jennifer must definitely have had not only the whole like world building, but also like the story at least like heavily written or mostly written, but like way before she actually started the comic, which is interesting. Um, and uh, originally there are multiple choices. I skipped over the choices because they all just end in a game over. Pastel gets hit by the shot and explodes. Fuchsia wakes her up and says, go, go back and fight. And then you just do it over again. I skipped those. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, you, I don't think anyone has ever uploaded this anywhere. You would have to get the original Kamishi by uh, uh, app in order to see it normally. So I saved you the trouble. Anyway, back to the lecture. Anyway, Chartreuse goes on a rampage, and Dr. Owie's like, well, guess I need someone with superpowers to do something with this about this again. So he wakes her up again, and um, she goes to go stop him. But on the way, she meets Fuchsia, who is this, like, bougie daughter of, like, some noble family or whatever, um, who is a lesbian. But her parents are like, that's not real. No, no, no. That's, yeah. just, <laughs> that's just a phase. That's not... Mm -hmm. You know, her parents are like, no, daughter of mine, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Pretty based. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she meets, Heli she meets her on the way and Heliotrope and her have like a moment like, oh, this Heliotrope sure is dreamy. And Heliotrope likes her and whatever. But she, uh, she beats Chartreuse, but she doesn't kill Chartreuse. Mm -hmm. She defeats her in combat, breaks her helmet. And then she's like, well, the, you're a, you're a, Desperately fucked up person and there's no help for you, <laughs> but here's what I can do and she uses oh god There's a technique. It's like I Blanking on the name. I'll put it on screen, but it's like purity re Revivification beam or something and it's just like a light beam that descends down on chartreuse and basically just mind wipes her back to being a child So she nice. forgets all the bad stuff that happened to her <laughs> that made her into the person she became <laughs> Nate uh, oh, I, I was just, I, I noticed that we've got a lot of color themes here going on, all these names and stuff. Yeah. Uh, does heliotrope mean something? Heliotrope is a flower and also the shade of purple that that flower is. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. All right. Heliotrope is a color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um... Is this drawn, by the way, in a different style from Unicorn it is, Jelly? It is, it is not, yeah. It is not drawn with a, just a mouse. Mm. Like, Unicorn Jelly was very pixely. Mm. This is, like, more painted. Which is better? I would... Um, I would say that at its best, Unicorn okay. Jelly is better. It looks competent here and there. I would say that at its best, Unicorn Jelly is more impressive. Yeah. But Pastel Defender Heliotrope has fewer times when, like, it just looks, like, real bad mm -hmm. by accident. Okay, first of all, two things. I just want to say that this is, from what I understand, that this is the most, like, erotic thing that Digibro can imagine. that given voice. Your sex voice. doll becomes your daughter and yeah. continue to fuck <laughs> uh, Also, yeah. I, wa I want to say that this, like... <laughs> Constantly switches back between like kawaii, slime, ooh, ooh, goo goo, slice of life, for Kokoro wish, yeah. uh, to like hard sci fi mumbo jumbo, and then like weirdly <laughs> gruesome, like fucking like social carnage, like social revolution now redistribute the bread, like homeless people like stabbing children in alleyways, like weird sex doll illusions. Yeah. It's Maybe like it's a really triad like, of like, scary yeah, things. I, I was just yeah. saying the, the tone yeah. of the like, well, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just enthralled. I, I, I think that's on purpose. I think that's... that's but no, that's of, awesome. Yeah. I, I don't want to, like, hammer on about the autism thing, but, like, it is generally a trait of, like, almost all of those types of comics. They always have, like, really crazy tone whiplash. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Sonic Who being a pretty... Yeah. Or Tales Gets yeah. Trolled yeah. being great example. I feel like it's deliberate, though, here. Like, I think the, like... Well, even if it is deliberate, I think yeah. there's just a tendency towards <clears throat> that type of storytelling in that, like, uh, you know... It's hard for me to explain why, but I think it's just the way that you think about stories. It's just, just huh? different. Well, when you're writing a story, there, there's probably some implicit, like, you want to guide the audience on a very specific kind of emotional coaster, and yeah. if you kind of lack that awareness, you're probably more like just a slam in between right. emotions real hard. You're just thinking about what the story is yeah. in your mind, and not about, like, how it's going to feel to the audience when they read it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. So, in this battle, 
Well, first of all, I'd like to say that after this battle against Chartreuse, the news reports on it. They see Pastel Defender Heliotrope. They're like, oh my god, a plastic superhero? What a scoop! And they, <laughs> <laughs> and they report on it. And uh, they're like, and everyone's like, oh wow, so you're Dr. Owie's daughter? Cool. Does that mean you go to school? Where? What, what school do you go no. to? And Dr. Owie's like, oh. Oh no. I guess I gotta send her to school now. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he does, and that's what happens. Does she start at kindergarten, or is she? Uh... I don't. I don't know. No, I don't think she doesn't start at kindergarten. The, the, the wait, 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 wait. How old is she physically? What is yeah, she? Yeah, like, like? she looks like this. That does not answer the yeah, question. Yeah, th th there's looks... some there's some strange a implications adult. about adult, the doctor, right? depending on this answer. She. I mean, I don't know. Look, I'll, here's I'll show a pic I'll show a picture of her on screen, and you, the viewer, can decide. I mean, oh, she's yeah, doesn't help me. She's sort of just cartoonish looking, right? Okay. She's not really like. Does she any... look old enough that the daughter thing is the weirdest part? She's got. I mean, she's got boobs. All right. Okay. She's like pretty. Sm she's like pretty small, but she's got boobs. The title know. character of this comic only exists out of shame and embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> the plot forward is because the creator of her has to save face. It's the only reason this is happening. Yeah, he tried his best not to let her be a fully realized person, but he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you know, as time goes on, right? She starts going to school. She starts. Uh, she starts dating Fuchsia, I guess. Uh, Owie does. Owie eventually gets. He gets over it, right? He starts to. See, he starts to care about her. Does he get over it? Does he replace her with a new sex bot? Is he able to fill this void in his life? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Actually, oh man, there is a there is a scene later when it's um like the, the Church of Godan mm -hmm. is doing some like weird military coup thing, and she keeps getting damaged, and what he has to do is um he has to go out and buy a, a whole bunch more sex dolls because mm -hmm. when she gets damaged. Um, he, he has to take the Omnipotor out of the old body and put it in the new body and then melt some of the plastic from the old body onto the new one because it like has her memories in the body. Sure. Uh, so he goes, he has to just buy a bunch of like, basically like, extra lives for her in okay. the form of like buying a whole bunch of new sex Does models. she ever learn? Uh, that the man she considers her father has blasted many loads. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Mm. I don't. I don't think it ever comes up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good for her that she's blissfully yeah. unaware of that now. Okay. Okay. But during that battle, during that battle, um, an entity is watching. An entity is watching through Fuchsia's eyes, and this is an AI called <laughs> Cursor, and in, in all caps. And Cursor is KY, but... Huh? What? Well, Cursor is KY, but it's like a puppet KY with button eyes. But it's not actually that. It's just a program. It's like a, it's like a, a forward-facing operating system for Chow. Not the girl, the computer, mm. that was made to like take control of all the ships and, and yeah. stuff and humanity. Here, so, like... Chow's, like some dark tower continuity. So Chow's yeah. operating system is like watching this unfold through the eyes of Fuchsia and oh, wait, hold on. There's a there's a who told her to do that? Don't worry about Could it. Could you remind me who Fuchsia is? I can't remember. Fuchsia's just lesbian. A, she's just a girl. Oh the lesbian. She's, yeah. she's just a girl. Okay. And okay. who who um Pastel Defender Heliotrope likes and they start dating after this happens. Was okay. that was that was that the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, man, is, am I at the end already? I feel like... What's, what's Crawl, Crawl, Crawlney? <sighs> the Crawlney, okay. Well, they're an alien <clears throat> from another world, and they are involved in, like, the artifacts that Chow was explaining at the end of Unicorn Jelly. And Crawlney, we will come to learn later, are, like, a more advanced, like, dimension-hopping being. Mm. Um... I don't remember why I put them here. I think they have something to do with Um but I forget. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, cursor, cursor, cursor. There's gotta be some reason why I mentioned cursor. Okay, I'm pretty sure that basically they just live their life, right? There's like the church does some, the church of Godan does some stuff. Uh, it's eventually revealed that Godan is not a god. He's actually just like a human who like merged himself. He was like a scientist who merged himself with a jelly, and the jelly people can't live in this world very well because there's no 
electants. Jelly live on electants, and they have chatoy ants in this world, and jelly don't live very well on that. So I'm not even sure why the jelly exists in this world at all, mm. but they do. And Godan fused with them. And basically, time goes on, and they live out their lives, and fuchsia and uh, pastel grow old and die together, right? Okay. And she's like... And uh, Pastel, they, they go, they live on a farm, they die, uh, uh, Pastel, is, like, her hair is all falling out, she's got, like, the doll, like, you know, hair holes, you know what I mean? You know, she's, like, her, her eye falls, she's got, like, like, a fake leg and stuff, she's all Jeez. cracked and shit. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Swap her bodies, that's the thing they can well, do. Well, she's like, well, Fuchsia got old and died, and she's uh, like, yeah, once Fuchsia goes, I'm, I'm not going anymore. Hmm. So she's, so she goes, it's like, well, time to die, she's gonna take out her omnipotor. But, Cursor, right? Cursor from Trissel My Stand. When she watched the battle, she went into like a dormant, like she 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 was told to do some weird fuckery, and then she told her like <coughs> cyborg minions, like, hey, be good guys, uh uh, and wake me up in the future. And then they do. And in the future, like at the end of time, Cursor awakens as Fuchsia. And Fuchsia like reawakens through this AI program, and then she chose goes back in time to her own dimension uh, to find Pastel before she perishes, or before she pulls the orb out. And she's like, no, 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 sorry you had to see me die, but actually I'm fine now, and I'm here from the end of time. Come on with me. And they like restore their bodies, and they travel to this well, place. Yeah. So it's not it's not actually Fuchsia though, right? It's She's like possessed, or is it? Is she brought back to life? I'm know. gonna be honest with you. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. If it, I think this is supposed to actually be fuchsia. I am not entirely clear on what the logic is by which cursor transforms into fuchsia. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You know, there might be an answer. Okay. I don't have. I don't. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't. I don't know it. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens. And so, they're like ancient end of time space gods now, and they travel. I'm gonna show on screen, like, the cosmological image. You can see, like, there's, like, these big time tubes going through the time void, and, like, like off of them are shooting, like... Okay, so Trissel My Stand. Pastel is, like, an offshoot bit of Trissel My Stand that splintered out of it as, like, a beam of light splintering through a prism, mm -hmm. which is why Electance was split into, like, the seven colored, colored shadow answers. Right. Of course. Naturally. Elementary. Yeah. Oh, so if you combine them all, will it become again the other thing? Kinda, yes. Because it turns out that what the Omnipotor is, is the universe of Pastel. Which, if you look at it as a four-dimensional time oh, tube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. <laughs> right? It if, this, if, this a object. if this dimension is time, right, it expands through time. But then it like collapses back in on itself because the slime, because the humano jellies, which is what Godan is, mm. they mm. realized that this was the problem with their universe is that there was no electance because of this split. And so they caused the universe at the end to double back in on itself and collapse into a single object, mm. which is the Omnipotor. And the Omnipotor, because it is, you know, I think. Because it's this split universe recombined into a single object, it does emit electants, and they go and they place that in this, they place it over like a single world plate in pastel, and it does, it emits electants and it lets slimes live, the jellies can live now, um, and it's mm -hmm. good. This is above galaxy brain. And that's... And that's like that's basically it. That's that's the end of Pastel Defender Heliotrope. Okay. She places the Incredible. she places the Omnipotor. Let me see if I've missed anything. Um, I'm impressed these all have endings too. Like you rarely see that. Yeah. Oh. Um, or at least the, these do have endings. I guess I shouldn't say they all do. Yeah. Okay. So so like Ben. 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 Cur Cursor's minions created this evil universe because they like misunderstood Cursor's final command to them, mm -hmm. and this was just like how they interpreted it. Uh, basically, she said to be good, but they didn't know what good was, so they had to make something like really evil so that they could like measure goodness against it. Okay. And and then, but they put the they put the omnipotor in the place so the slimes can live and the humans and slimes can live in peace together and they won't have to be war if they choose for not not to have any, to be any war. And uh, 
happy ending, but then it's like far in the future, like beyond the end of time. The fucking time skips in these stories, man. Everyone is data. Every, some entity, this entity, this is its name, uh, just like revives them all as like pure data. And I think like the last thing that happens is like a like magical, like digital, like data version of Dr. Owie is like, hey guys, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's what happens. What? Is it fair to call these things stories? Like yeah. they, they, they're like they have characters and they're a sequence they, of events. They are, they're just a sequence of events. It feels like they're more like lorries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, a, like there's a premise. Oh. The premise continues until people grow old and then they die. I see and what you mean. That, yeah, there's no like plot right. really. I see what you mean. Well, it's beyond that because it's more like she kind of goes to the end of the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, which I totally get why yeah, yeah, you would yeah. have the mindset of like I want to follow this universe from its literal start to its literal end and like just even if it's not all relevant to the story, just to have like it tacked in there. Yeah, yeah. I see yeah. what you mean. Sometimes, yes, it does feel like the story is more of just an excuse to display these really, like, elaborately constructed, like, she world is a line time. She god creating and destroying her own pocket universes. I, yeah. I wish I had on me that image of, like, all the, like, the world lines that all, like, intersect and, like, twist around each other and, like, how they're all related to each other. Um, it's pretty fucking neat. Hmm. But anyway, that's... That's Pastel Defender Heliotrope. Cool. It goes to the end of time. And, and it, it, it died right when Obama was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm already, like, unironically deeply inspired by what I've learned from yeah. these stories. Yeah, I feel enriched. I, yeah, I, like, I, I don't the, blame like, you. Like, legit, like, uh, I'm working on a story that will require me to go to a level kind of like this in the last book. And <laughs> you have to go of, beyond galaxy. Now kind of got ideas for how she, I'm going to do that. She really goes the extra mile, because she doesn't, she doesn't just, like, write the story and do the comic. She does, like... She, right, she does, like, audio dramas, and she comes up with, like, she, like, designs, like, board games that the people play in these worlds. Yeah, what? Really cool. There's one called, ah! they play, they play a game called Tasen in, uh, mm. in, it's like a, it's like, it's like Chinese checkers, but on, like, a triangular board with chess pieces, kind of. Um, okay. and they, like, she just designed that game. Are these games, game. like, functional IRL? Like... There are rules for them, yeah. But are yeah. they, like, functional? You would have to build your own set. It can be played, but no one ever has. <laughs> well, okay, so yeah. if I built my own set and I abided by the rules, could I have a yeah. real game? Oh, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. It's a design. I don't know if it's any good. Yeah, sure. That's um, kind of what I meant, like functional, like you know, like if I, I like. I don't know. Do the rules work? Time like, for shekels for heckles. Well, <laughs> shekels for heckles. Toss in addition. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but she makes it and she does the audio dramas and like. She really goes all out. It's very, it's very impressive. You can tell that this is like her. Like, for the, as long as she was working on it, like, this was what she was doing with her life. Like, this is what her mind was on. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of it. So, the last major, the, the last of the three, like, major story comics that she wrote is called To Save Her. And To Save Her is basically, I guess it's kind of a side <laughs> story to Unicorn Jelly. It was happening at the same time as Past Old Defender Heliotrope, yes. apparently, right? They were running, like, more or less at the yeah. same time as mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. To Save Her is... It's also in black and white. Like, Pastel Defender Heliotrope is color. To save her is black and white. But it's also, like, painted in sort of the same style. It's kind of, like, noir-inspired, or it's supposed to be kind of a noir thing. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. She, she describes it as noir. Um, so it takes place on Trissel My Stand again. However, it takes place across multiple splits, <laughs> which basically just means alternate timelines. Mm. Right? So, like, slightly different variant timelines in which, like, something slightly different happened and... You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So, the main character is KY. Again, this mm. mutant who Chow uh, dissected in Unicorn Jelly. So, KY is um, still alive in this, in this particular splay, and we come to understand that the Stormfall, the, the event that like destroys the, um, all the plates, all the world plates in Trissel Maistan, it happens in 80% of all worlds, all splays, timelines. Mm -hmm. But in 20% of them, it doesn't happen. And that 20% were saved because of Chow. Like, her, like, like, her leadership or her, like, scientific understanding, the things that happened because of her interference, managed to prevent the Stormfall from destroying all life in 20% of all the timelines. And so in this world, 
you can travel between splays freely if you have like a, a, a device to do so, but you're not allowed to go to Stormfall splays because those are off limits, those are dangerous, mm -hmm. but you can go to any of the not any of the safe splays freely. But she wants to go and find Chow because she knows that what happened to Chow was that she got old and she died a horrible death, her fucking crystal blood exploded, um, and she wants to save her. And Didn't she Chow like dissect her? Yes. For the greater <laughs> but, good. But she says that Chow saved the basically saved the universe or a part of it, and it's not fair that like she was left to die. How very utilitarian. <laughs> so so she basically recruits a team of teenagers with attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, not really. Actually, Aww. she but she recruits uh, characters from Unicorn Jelly from different like timeline variants to get a team together. She gets into a, like a dimension or a timeline hopping machine and she goes from timeline to timeline and first she finds um, a version of Commander Foe, the guy who led the je the Jelly's genocide mm -hmm. on um uh, what do you call it? On the, the new play, planet, or world, world, plate, plate. world plate that they went to. And he, in this timeline, he has Uni, who in this one is called Only. I think because he was the only slime to survive on that plate. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't have the unicorn horn, but it's the same slime. And she goes to another planet, and, and, and she, she gets him and she's like, Oh, you're so old, you're so decrepit. But here, sit in this pod, and it makes him immortal, and it fixes all his wounds. And he's like, whoa, you can do that? And she's like, yes. And they have like a romance, sort of. This like old guy who she makes young again. And, her, and by the way, KY, the thing about KY in To Save Her is that she is wearing an endoskeleton. Slimes can like have this like metal endoskeleton that they can just like squeeze their bodies around and become sort of human-ish looking. <laughs> so she just kind of looks like a slime girl. Like Colossus. Who? From the X-Men. Uh, metal. <laughs> turn into metal. <laughs> no, no, no. No, she's like slimy flesh over like an it's interior, a skeleton. an interior skeleton. like, oh, like forgive me, it's yeah. an skeleton, right. skeleton bones. Yeah, yeah. But it, <laughs> it took like, me a second too. I was like, Wait she puts it on and she turns into like she basically turns into like a normal looking girl, but like with she's teal, right? Because mm -hmm. she's like teal colored slime flesh. But then it like malfunctions and like bleh, and she like fucks up and it just turns her into sort of like a blob face, like just two like big glassy like slime eyes. Mm. Um, and uh, so she just kind of looks a little bit fucked up, but she's like, oh, I guess I'll just roll with it. And it doesn't matter at all. Foe, like, falls in love with her anyway. It's sort of like a thing for some reason, I don't know. And they go to another universe, and they find, or another timeline, and they find Texo, you know, the psychopathic murderer guy, uh, who in this timeline is called Virtue, and he's like a warrior monk. Um, okay. And they go and, and they find another version of the engineer builder guy YY, who is called Wailani, and he's like a street urchin in this world. And he's like, oi, governor, oi, chimney sweep, man. <laughs> what? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fucking kidding about any of this. And, and, um, and, and that's it. That's what they, she like gets them all together. All right, but it turns out that she, K, K-Y, K for short, K was not the only K to have this idea. In fact, every... In every, in every non-Stormfall world, KY is not killed and dissected by Chow. Mm, mm. And so, in all those worlds, basically all surviving KYs were like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna save Chow. So, there are actually, like, infinite numbers of different... Well, different KYs who also have infinite variant groups of alternate timeline these guys? Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, imagine these five dudes, but like they're all like dressed differently and they have different accents <laughs> yeah. and stuff, and sometimes they're girls and sometimes they're boys and stuff. Is like the a lot less rich, but no. Huh? Almost like it's looking a lot less rich <laughs> by yeah. a second. Yeah. 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 So um and then the 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 good the, the Okay. So they're all they're all they're all on the ship, right? They're all going place to place, finding each other, finding their crew members. And then one day they're going through the space between dimensions and another ship, like a ghostly echo, passes through their ship and they see themselves, but Texto is on the ground, he's dead, he's been shot in the head, 
uh, Kay is holding the gun, and everyone else is like, what? And also, Kay is missing the top of her head. But it doesn't matter, because she's a slime. It's not, that's not a lethal blow. Um, so everyone's like, okay, so that was probably like an alternate version of us, right? Mm -hmm. Who, like, and I guess things went bad for them. Okay, that's, that sucks, but what are you gonna do? And then, so they go to another world and they find this girl called Vola, and she, in this world, like, they're... This final world that they go to, they have technology from the Kralny. And the Kralny, you finally get to see one. It's like this weird, um... Like, it's like a big, like, mushroom, but, like, its head is, like, two discs that, like, is not even attached to each other, but it's got teeth all around it, mm. and it's, it's like a... It's like a, it's extra dimensional, right? Like its body doesn't connect to itself because it extends through multiple dimensions and that's oh, how it connects. Fuck. So, so it doesn't even have to like touch itself to be like a single entity, if you understand. So they have like a Kralny ship here, which is way more advanced than their machine. And um, they go, they, they, they fuck around with it and like the Kralny kills like alternate versions of themselves. There's like, all, as they go from place to place, they end up accidentally like they get back onto their ship, only they find that it's actually the ship of a different group from a different splay, and they're like, I guess we'll just have to work with it. Uh, and this, this, that's just basically like what the whole, it's just a sequence of weird like alternate timeline shenanigans occurring. Um, and like noir romance between uh, Faux and Kay. And so they get their final party member, it's Vola from this world of the Kralny, so they, they, they get out of there because it seems like the Kralny wants to stop them, but then the Kralny like gets onto their ship and it grabs Kay, but then it lets her go, and its motivations aren't really clear. It seems like he does want her to do whatever she's doing. There's a big, like, multi-universal, like, gathering of all the Ks. Like, all these different Ks from all these different dimensions, all the ones that survived, all gather together to, like, discuss their plan. And they say like like one of them isn't there. Like one of like one K didn't make it to this gathering. What could she be? Is did she go crazy or did she die? I don't know. Nobody knows. Um, well, so everyone eventually is like, hey K. So you told us you didn't really tell you didn't really explain the plan that well. Could you please tell us why we're doing all this? And she's like, okay, okay, you got me. It's not just about saving Cho. It's actually about stopping the stormfall. I'm going to prevent the storm fall in every universe. I'm going to go back to the beginning of time, and I'm going to prevent the storm fall in every universe, and save those other 80% of all timelines. And it's like, okay, well, I, guess, I guess that makes sense. But it turns out, yes, that's technically true, but really, what she wants to do is she wants to go and get Chow. She hates Chow. She wants revenge on her for dissecting oh. her. Mm. And she wants to travel back in time and she will prevent the Stormfall by preventing humanity from ever coming to that Trisselmeistan in the first place. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna retroactively wipe out humanity and thereby prevent the Stormfall and make a perfect, perfect world, only slime, no humans, fuck the humans, yeah. And is this just one KY who wants to do this, or is this collectively all KYs who will this? I don't know. Okay. But is, <laughs> I'm is not this what sure. they all are doing together? There are other KYs, I, I am not entirely clear on whether the other KYs had pure intentions and this one is like a crazy renegade one, okay. or whether they all secretly wanted this. But we're dealing with just one, for our purposes. Yes. Okay. okay. Anyway, they go to the end of time, and there's like a time museum, and they're, they have, there's a, they, they're like, oh, we, we gotta stop her, we gotta go fight her, prevent her from doing this. They, they do that, it doesn't really work, she gets them on the ship, she takes them to another splay, she's like, everybody, get the hell out. Except you, Texto. I know you're evil and you want to do it. And he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I want to destroy the world too, it's cool. Um, and he, but they get back on the ship and the other ones sneak back on, and it turns out, no, that vision they had was not an alternate version. They actually passed their own future timeline, mm -hmm. and it comes to pass that they get in a fight. Texo thought he was safe because he thought once they landed on the ship it meant they couldn't come true anymore. But they get in a fight, K shoots him, he dies, uh, the, the hull breaks, YY gets thrown out into the space. And I think it's just, it's just Foe and K are the only ones that survive, and they crash land on, I think they crash land on, on, they crash land on some version 
of Trisselmeistan where the Minyan, which are like the servants of uh, Cursor, right? The thing that sort of became yeah, yeah. far future fuchsia, um, those things like greet them and I don't know. The ending's really vague. They end up on some version of Trisselmeistan and it's cryptic. I love that it. At, at, like, it's at the point now, we're talking about anything, you have to, like, talk about everything <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the version, the alternate timeline version of this, who was an AI recreation of this. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and uh, this thing that created uh, Cursor, no, this thing didn't create Cursor, but it awoken Cursor and told Cursor to do to do the thing with Fuchsia and to tell the Minyan to be good, which caused them to create uh click 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 click. Yeah. And uh, this I think that this thing is Oh I forgot to mention they do it's go cool. they do go and find Chow right at the moment of her death mm -hmm. and they like retrieve her body and like recreate her in like a vat of like crystal goo and like sort of clone her basically and have her like crystal mine inside and I'm pretty sure that that version of Chow in like the far future becomes this like computer spirit entity which is this thing mm. which created which sort of created cursor it's all very vague mm. I wish I had like a more concrete ending for you but that's pretty much that's pretty much where it ends hippo so wait did you mention what Minyan was Minyan are these like robot alien things who are I th I think they were created by, they were created by, Chow the computer, mm -hmm. and they are in like the far far future of Trisselmeistan. They are like the creatures that inhabit it, and they serve, they serve the like computer AI brain, it seems, and and they and they end up they are told to be good, and they are like so advanced that they don't like have any metric for goodness, so they create click oh, clockle right to like, as some sort of means of determining good from right from wrong. Literally like minions, like minions. I think so. I'm pretty sure it's a pun, yeah. Like, like banana, like minions. Like, 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 boomer, like boomer memes, to... like minions, yes. yeah. Yes, good. Um, well, shit, okay. Any questions about any of that? Besides what? <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of got a veil of mystery, yeah. but uh... Yeah, I, I get the general idea. I fell off like understanding after Helios. There was a sharp incline in confusion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. To, to save her is really like I've read it. I've read it through twice, and mm -hmm. I still I don't quite understand what is implied by the ending. Mm -hmm. I don't understand exactly like where they end up, or like I don't know whether it was all the the uh, the K is doing the thing or just one of them. It's all. It's I all see a lot of question marks. Over yeah, there. yeah. This yeah. is like ah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one's like particularly frustrating. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, viewers at home, if you want to give it a read and let me know if I missed anything in the comments and Ooh. tell me what I got wrong. Why do you think all of this is related to the mental breakdown in two thousand? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the last thing. All right. So. This You're is gonna all... sit down like a pastor and rap with us. Yeah, <laughs> back from yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about multiverse. Well, so the way this relates to the Kokoro wish, mm. and I have it all spiraling out from the Kokoro wish, is that she said in her 2005 comic, Impossible Things Before Breakfast, she said that she had a mental breakdown in 2000 after 14 years of trying and failing to make games, and it turns out. That 14 years before that, in 1986, uh, she, Jennifer, and her husband, Stephen, mm. um, had designed a, like, text bible and, like, prototype version of a video game. And the video game was called Multiverse. And what Multiverse was, Ooh. was basically, basically imagine, um, uh, No Man's Sky on the Amiga. Right? <laughs> no. I'm like, having difficulty doing it. <laughs> no. But for real. For real. So like procedurally generated yeah. planets or... Yeah. Okay. You would... There are screenshots... I mean, maybe if it's completely text-based, it could... Yeah. It's... No, Even it's... then, it'd be a lot, though, right? Like... Y yeah. Yeah, like Dwarf Fortress style. Mm -hmm. That's but, what I'm thinking. But even that, like, I'm imagining the amount of... 
processing that would even be needed for that. Are we sure this is real? They really yeah. did this? Okay. Well, there well, they really they made a Bible. The multiverse oh. and No Man's Sky were both unfinished, clearly. They, they made a Bible. They didn't actually, like, No, there it. are screenshots of the game. I mean, I'm oh. sure it wasn't a completed game. The whole thing of Ben St. Larp that you just made <laughs> up. It looks like, imagine, like, kind of like Atari-style, like, yeah. okay. graphics of... Uh, I'll, I'll be showing a bunch of them on screen mm -hmm. right now, but, like, two-dimensional, pixel-based, like, just kind of like a sort of kind of like like flat landscapes basically that have like some of them have like weird shapes and weird colors yeah basically you would you would go in multiverse you would go from the crawl knee uh, uh, mm -hmm. it was the crawl knee planet mm -hmm. and you would take dimensional movers like the one that k travels from dimension to dimension to in to mm -hmm. save her and you would go and explore randomly like procedurally generated uh, alien worlds like in no man's sky and so, that's it. That's my thesis, is basically, her, her Kokoro wish was to create multiverse. Mm -hmm. And she sold the rights to it to Activision, and I, Activision for, I think, $10,000. That actually happened? Yes, it happened. Oh. They bought the rights to the game, but then Activision folded, and, like, she got the rights back, but the deal... Did I just no. But the deal fell through, and mm -hmm. the game was never made. And I guess she blamed her husband for it. I guess <laughs> she made the Kokoro Wish comic. Hmm. And, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was the Kokoro Wish. Oh. And so because it went unfulfilled and in she, video games. And she game, got fed up, like, waiting, I guess, and just made it herself, well, kind of? Yeah, like, yeah, she, she like, like via comics. Down, yeah. the, basically, the ideas of what would have been multiverse ended up becoming the, mm. the, the setting of Unicorn Jelly, Pastor Defender Heliotrope, and to save her. And so, I don't know, next time you see Kokoro Wish, so she was just think about all this bullshit. She was just so ahead of her time that she had to wait for webcomics to be invented. <laughs> yeah. Because there was much. no other way. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, since we've heard so much about, about Jennifer, like, is there, you said that she and Steven together made the Bible and stuff. Is yeah. it, uh, how much, is there any way to quantify how much of this was, like, his ideas versus hers, or...? Not really. Okay. There's only, like, a very short, like, page describing what Multiverse was I'm, on I'm her website. I'm gonna bet that, like, the actual plot was probably all her ideas. It feels like, like the it. The programming end of this. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah. see, like, just from her, like, fixation on, like, weird science fiction, like, yeah. like, uh, stuff, it seems like she'd be the one to come up with, like, what if you could go to like, a, like a, a randomly generated world and it would have its own physics and its own vegetation and its own animal life. And the, oh that just feels like really, mm. yeah, something that she would do and then say, hey, husband, program this for yes. me. <laughs> Thank you. And then, and then after To Save Her, she didn't make any more comics, as far as I know. She's done like a couple, of, she like helped co-write like a book, I think. Um, and... I guess she was posting on the Gaming Steve forums when, whilst we were waiting for Spore to come out. What when was that? What year was that? Uh, 2012, I think? Okay. And, um, no. No. It was earlier than that, I think. No, like 2007. Damn. So it would have been, like, while this was still going on. And I remember she was posting, like, she would use the early release, like, Spore Creature Creator. And I remember her posting the Crawl Me. Oh. Where she used, like, glitches to, like, make, like, <laughs> like, like, mouths that didn't attach to the rest of the body and stuff to, like, simulate the, the, the effect of it. Was Impossible Things Before Breakfast not a comic? Was it, a it is a comic, but it's an autobio comic. Uh. It is just, it's only, like, 20 it started pages. At the same time as the same yeah. Right. And oh, just yeah. each one is just a, a recounting of some, like, inexplicable phenomena that oh. happened to her. Right. In right. her life. Okay. And then... After 2009, there were no more comics, and then in 2012, Jennifer started writing uh, f uh, Friendship is Magic, My Little Pony fan fiction uh, under the name of Chatoyance, uh, which oh. is the name of her kind of thing in the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and she writes stories in the Friendship is Optimal and the Conversion Bureau uh, alternate universe. Whoa. Do those uh, join with the Rift Cafe no, in any no, significant way? I don't know. I haven't read them and okay. I don't intend to. Uh, <laughs> Why <laughs> not? Com you, comments, let me know well, if they're You prepared good. this lecture and you didn't even read all the sources? I don't like, like, you fucking you care about it. <laughs> <laughs> Get this out of here. Friendship is optimal. To, to, to be clear, like friendship is optimal and the conversion viewer are other 
fanfics, not written by her, that have like huge followings and oh. tons of people write in their universe. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. She's writing her stories in the universe of those fanfics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. these Hence are like... why Ben's like, fuck that, I'm not reading. These, these are, yeah, these are like alternate universes for My Little Pony that other people like wrote a story in and then more people were like, like added and contributed to. So it's to. like fanfiction of fanfiction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I, I see you have little question marks down there, I guess, because the future is unknown. Yeah, this, the spiral continues mm -hmm. into the into the far future. It always does. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, what's she up to? I mean, she, she's alive still? She's on she, YouTube. She, well, yeah? Well, vlogs? I think she, I think she, video essays? Just or? like her talking into a camera, like at a bar or something. At a, at a bar. At a bar. <laughs> I think, well, I think that was like what? last year. She like sings a little song, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about like a single video, not like a series or anything. She doesn't post regularly. Okay, okay. But she's just, uh, you know, she's 60 years old. She's uh, occasionally posts a video to YouTube. Mm. I think she made she made a comment on Fim Fiction like a week ago. So she's still cool. she's still active on there. Was any of this ever? Like like popular or financially solvent? Any of this never go anywhere. No. Oh, Son uh, of a bitch, there no. is no god. No. How, how well known was this at like the? She was um. I mean, she, Cobra Wish is a big meme. She she was else. probably she wasn't like Chris Chan well known, but she was maybe like maybe a little less well known than like Ula Lilia. Yeah. Who was like. Some people know who who that is. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so she's a lol. She was cow. kind of a lol cow, but not like a hugely well known. Yeah, yeah. Well, mostly because she's not really that cringy. Yeah, exactly. I was about to this say. Is like yeah. Genius. Yeah, yeah. She's she like a really for, creative, for, dedicated artist. For, yeah. for, for a exactly. while, it was there. It was popular to just. There this were, is like proof there are good boomers in the world. There are websites that are like like uh. Like you know your web like your web comic sucks and stuff. Right. Who's like their whole mo is like call web comics bad. And sometimes web comics are bad. And like it makes sense to just trash them. And sometimes comics like this get like lumped in with that. And I think there was a perception that, oh, Jennifer Diane writes, she made all those really bad web comics. Mm. And maybe to some people that's true, but I think I've made the case that like there actually is a lot of stuff to appreciate here. And it would be like a, a huge disservice just be like, oh, Unicorn Jelly, oh, that bad comic. Gotcha. You know, there's more to it than Between that. Between this and One Piece, my mind has been so expanding. <laughs> <laughs> the possibilities. Hey Ben, cool. yeah. there's some uh, uh, audience questions as well that you wanted to answer. The PTA. Oh, the PTA. Us. I have one pulled up here. Do you guys want to look at those and maybe oh, maybe ask great. some? Maybe. Well, I, I have a really important question. While you guys are getting those questions ready, I just want to say, Ben. My favorite part of this lecture was all the slime, mm. and I like slime-related media. Yeah. I was wondering if there was any other sorts of things that like involved slime as like an integral part of its universe. Maybe there's a lecture about such a thing as well. Yeah, Maybe yeah. there might be a lecture coming out soon about just such a another slime. Look on the screen right now to <laughs> see that shit, dude. Link in the description. RFCK lecture, baby. Put a card. Put a card in the corner. Card in the corner. Yeah. Little <laughs> thing coming down yeah. right there. Yeah, I, never, yeah. I never do those, but maybe I can. Me and Ben make a slime thing. Click on it now. Uh, yeah. uh, can, I, can I read one of the questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for, so for our PTA, from here at RadCon 4, we have a question from Happy D. And of course, this is, we already talked about this. Can we get an answer from everyone in the room? What is your Kokoro wish? I want to go last. Hmm. Munch, you're first. Oh, God, no. Jesus Christ. I, I, I want to just fucking fulfill my duty to my clan and to my nation, and I want my, my, my father proud to have had me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I guess, I, I mean, this sort of stuff is, is, you know, like we were saying, really inspiring. It's mm. just super creative, mm -hmm. and, like, even if it's not, like, successful, it's some sort of, it's the sort of thing I want to do. I mean, she did sell books. I don't well, know. Yeah. I don't know how many. Sold. I mean, you gotta live, but like, yeah. being famous is not like the goal. It's like to mm -hmm. create something mm -hmm. so dense and so, like, personal and cool. So dare I say, base. So, like, yeah, mm -hmm. my cover wishes to make uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. How about you, Jesse? Uh, my oh, okay. Um, okay. So you know uh, how in the '80s, in the 1980s, Stephen King. Mm. Was Hooked on cocaine, mm, mm. and all he did was sit in his cocaine mansion, writing six novels a day and making millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. That's my coker a wish. <laughs> I want to be Stephen King on cocaine, writing six novels a day. With well, me, <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Uh, I guess mine is, I, I feel right now, my Coke Earl Wish, it may change, but it definitely is uh, to do more actually creative media creation stuff like this and make a story that makes people feel good about stuff and maybe helps them out in living their lives in some useful way. Uh, yeah, something, something like that. Tom? Uh, yeah, my Coke Row wish is to make something really fucking cool that gets people as hype as I get hype about my favorite things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, so. my Coke Row wish is that within five years, uh, there will be someone doing a lecture on the Chiro Corporation Mega Tunnel. <laughs> we'll all know what that means when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're all like, kind of like pulling something out of our ass, and Digi's like been dreaming about this question for years. Well, what about you, teacher? We, we can't release this video because Digi just said that we're gonna get <laughs> our family's gonna get on the list. My my no, 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 I'm just talking about a story that I am yeah. making that I. I hope one day we'll have lectures written about it because yeah. it is because I yeah, want to yeah. be as common. You, you want to be this person. Yeah. This. I, I feel like I'm sitting in a room with the Unabomber. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all see, and you guys are all a part of it <laughs> officially. My Kokoro wish is that you, the viewer, like, comment. <laughs> SaintComics.com and read my other shit that I made. Mm -hmm. And go to Patreon.com slash Ben Saint and give me money for it, because that's how I make money. Dab! You know, none of the other questions are good, in cool. my opinion. I think we should just end it right there. Right on. Perfect. Perfect ending. Class dismissed! Woo! Ah! Yeah! Slime, 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 sl